Okay, my name is Russ. I'm an executive MBA candidate, and I have over a decade of project management experience. And this seed deck is about my startup, Sarah.ai Books. Um, I'm seeking a small investment to launch a suite of um, disruptive and hypergrowth products in literacy education. So this is the opportunity. 10 to 15 million children in the United States are um, struggling with literacy. In fourth grade, one in three readers are reading below basic uh, levels of proficiency, um, and only one-third are, are proficient, and fewer than one in 10 are advanced. And this literacy gap exists within schools and even within classrooms, and often even between siblings. It persists through high school and into adulthood and has stubbornly persisted through generations despite decades of research, even television programs, and now um, attention hacking mobile apps. The question is, why should it? Creating readers that are proficient or even advanced in fourth grade, if we reason from first principles, should only require 350 hours of practice and fewer than 100 hours of instruction. In contrast, by the time they enter the fourth grade, children spend about 3,300 hours in class beginning in kindergarten. Now, literacy instruction is not the only task our early grade teachers take on, but it is foundational and of the highest priority. I love our teachers, and this isn't their fault, but the simple truth is it wastes a huge amount of time. Imagine, um, however, with me, a different world that is possible. Imagine that in every third grade or even second grade classroom, every child is a fluent reader, free from the frustration and shame that struggle engenders. Imagine what could happen those, in those classrooms where the focus was on what was being read rather than who wasn't reading. Let me introduce you to Sarah and the Puka. In Sarah's story of learning to read, the puka on her right shoulder um, introduces her to an old practice of aided reading that has created literate populations for thousands of years, but with a trickster's twist that pulls letters off the page. I call this a practice of engaged aided reading, or learning to read by ear. Um, it's simple. Um, for students and very effective, but pertinent to this pitch. It's actually easy to automate and to augment with code. Um, to test these points, I wrote a website to teach fluent readers how to read in a new way, English written in the International Phonetic Alphabet. The learners who learned by ear showed exponential improvement, quickly learning new words and reading passages at over 120 words per minute, while the control middled at fewer than 80 words per minute. When we think about the challenge of artificial tutors approaching or much less surpassing the efficacy of human teachers, we might see very little of the human touch that can be replicated without a fantastic breakthrough in artificial intelligence because the competency of computing is very different from the competencies of humans. So it's easy to get stuck in this paradigm of computer versus human. Humans, where the humans always win until the dystopian moment we don't. But we can change that paradigm to thinking about humans augmented by computers and what can be done with that synergy that can't be done in human to human instruction. This paradigm is called intelligence amplification, where rather than thinking about artificial intelligence replacing human labor, we develop a hybrid intelligence. So without rabbit holing too far on this, what I'm developing is like an IDE for emerging readers, an environment that augments their human abilities with responsive immersion powered by impossibly fast computations. I've pitched this concept to the National Science Foundation and they want me to apply for seed money. For early grade teachers who want to better monitor student progress in high frequency word fluency, Sarah.ai Books introduces printable offline worksheets that intelligently probe and document site word fluency. Unlike static high frequency word lists and activities, graded worksheets automatically update student profiles and make progress visible on a teacher dashboard. 
and an adaptive learning algorithm populates new individualized worksheets with sentences containing only two or fewer non-fluent words. Sarah.ai Worksheets launches next month at my third speaking engagement at an annual Utah EdTech conference. I plan on earning revenue within six months. My revenue stream is selling Singleton premium subscriptions to parents from my website and bulk subscriptions to school districts and parent-teacher associations. This revenue stream will fund new, higher-value Reading by Ear products. The market is large and perennial. Over four million children enter kindergarten every year. Many parents use more than one reading app because these apps do a very good job increasing time on screen, but haven't moved the needle on efficacy. We still have as many struggling fourth graders today as we did a decade ago. The market doesn't end with children. Adult English Literacy, or AEL, is a multi-million dollar market. And 36 million adults could be learning to read by ear. And as we look to growth in year five and beyond, we're looking at billions of people who will one day be learning to read many world languages by ear. In fact, had I not learned to read Chinese 20 years ago, I wouldn't have discovered this learning by ear innovation. So this is my team, my three children. We're each struggling readers in unique ways, yet their reading proficiency in today in grades six, four, and one are well above the 90th percentiles. I'm Russ Fugel, and I'm an award-winning children's book author with over a decade of project management experience. Last year, I graduated from the University of Utah with a degree in writing studies, and this year, I'm an executive MBA candidate at the Quantic School of Business and Technology. So here's what I need, $250,000 to get into 100 classrooms, to start earning revenue within six months, and to write that grant to the National Science Foundation, which is seed money that doesn't cost equity. That grant will allow me to prove superior efficacy of practice before a Series A valuation. So now is the time to leverage your investment. 250,000 today is matched within six months by 250,000 from the National Science Foundation with a likely follow-on grant of one million. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to your questions. I have a question for you. <coughs> First yes. off, great presentation. Uh, I love this. I think that's awesome. Um, and I definitely see it even among my college friends. I'm, I mean, I go to BYU, and I feel like the, most of the kids there are fairly smart, but I'm still surprised at times at the reading mm -hmm. comprehension level. But I feel like you really talked, you, you really dove deep into the problem, but I, I'm not sure you really explained very well the the solution that you offer, yeah. um, or at least I didn't really quite understand it and grasp it very well. Mm -hmm. So let me begin by saying, you know, I started working on this over five years ago, and I did a lot of research, and I have spent a lot of time putting together presentations to talk about what uh, learning to read by ear is. Um, it actually took me two years to get to that name. Um, and I found that... Um, Experts would tend to dismiss the method or the practice because it's unorthodox, and others would have a hard time understanding how revolutionary such a simple practice could be. So I don't dive into it a lot here, but I did write all my research into this book um, in narrative form, and I have endnotes in there, and on my website you can go and see those notes. But simply, um, engaged aided reading is Aided reading, first of all, is having an assistant who can read aloud words you don't know when you come up. And it's just like a parent reading with a child and, and assisting them in sounding out um, or just saying a new word. Engaged is actually the part that's the twist that actually pulls those letters off the page. And it's a forced letter-wise engagement of each letter in the word. And that really helps um, with memory and retention of the word. And it's something that actually sounding out a word forces because you have to pay attention to each letter. But um, yeah, the engaged part is just like the aided part, there's multiple ways to do aided reading. There's also multiple ways to do engagement, and sounding out words is only one of those. But there are other ways that computers, like in, like in an IDE environment, can help um, to help to do. So my, to answer your question simply, my 
my innovation long term is basically just an app on the phone that can assist a child in reading through text fluently because most of the words on that screen, the app is going to be aware that the children knows those words while introducing only a few new words. So it, it really has a practice of fluency while introducing new words. Yes. Hi, yeah, so I, I kind of want to follow up on that. I'm trying to visualize what this engaged aspect of. When you say the letters get pulled off of mm -hmm. the page, are you saying like you take letters away from words or are you yeah. bringing letters up so that they can like sound out each letter individually? I'm, yeah. I'm trying to understand that. I have uh, a couple of brothers and sisters that have dyslexia. So yeah. I, you know, I understand this challenge with, with yeah. trying to approach this in, in education. Anyway, so, so that's my question for okay. now. Okay. Yeah. So my, um, my first daughter actually uh, learned to read by ear. Um, we kind of stumbled upon it. But um, it's basically what I had her do was when she came to a word she didn't know. Um, she had learned how to sound out words, but she didn't. She wouldn't sound out words. <coughs> Excuse me. So when I came to a word she didn't know, I'd have her name every letter, and then I'd tell her what the word is, and that's, that's one instantiation. With my son, I actually put together kind of a, an alpha test and had him work in the computer, and when he got to a word he didn't know, he used the arrow keys to highlight each letter, and when it got to the end of the word, it would speak the word to him. And, and when he was learning to read, I had actually kind of started to put together this theory of learning to read by ear, but one of the things that I found, um, talking about dyslexia, my brother is dyslexic, is he, would, he had known his letters for, for over a year, and he would slowly drag his finger across while looking at a word from left to right, and still he would say letters out of order while he's looking at it, dragging his finger across. And, and so this engaged aided reading, this engagement is bringing that focus, forcing that focus onto each letter. And that practice helps dyslexic students as well as everyone. And so um, in the IPA study I mentioned, the International Phonetic Alphabet, and I have up on the screen right here, what I did to, to, do, to force this engagement is actually what you see on the right-hand side here, where the top word is child, written in the International Phonetic Alphabet. And I would have the learner actually find the match in the bottom three. And just by finding that match, that forces letter-wise attention uh, to the word, and, and that helps them retain. And so without even teaching them how to sound out words in the International Phonetic Alphabet, just by doing that matching activity, uh, which took longer than the baseline, than the control in blue here, that actually propelled them to, to rapidly uh, to remember those words. And, and the bottom line is, sounding out words takes 10 times longer than recognizing words. And every word, uh, or 99 point, 5% of words that we encounter as fluent readers are sight words. So, um, and that's not just to say high frequency words, it's words like obstinate versus obstreperous. We're gonna see obstinate and recognize it a little bit easier than we are obstreperous because we never come across it. Does that make sense? Great job presenting, Russ. Thank you. Um, I just want to, I'm still I'm just a little bit confused. And so I want you to kind of walk me through, if I'm a parent, like explain to me. So I sign up for this subscription mm -hmm. and then explain to me how it's going to work. Am I, is, do I have to be pretty hands on with my child? Do I need to be sitting next to them mm -hmm. the whole time? Is it an app? Because you say worksheets, and then you're talking yeah. about this app. So could you just explain it a little yeah. bit more? So the first product that I had in mind um, was actually powered by um, kind of voice interaction and artificial intelligence in my mind. And, um, and that's where I want to get to eventually. This is one of my new reading by ear products that I mentioned at the bottom of this slide here. Um, but for my... MVP here that I'm launching next month, and I've tried several MVPs and pivoted. This is something that my youngest daughter actually did, and we put together this worksheet for her. And what it does is it's generated with algorithms, and it's individualized to her. 
and most of the words on that page are words she recognizes, so she can fluently work through the page and encounter new words in context. But the, um, when we come to one of those identified words that are new, it's like highlighted. And I probably should have put in a, an image of the worksheet in here, but it's highlighted. And underneath that, there are three options. And it's just that matching game that I was mentioning. And by doing that matching, she can actually circle the one um, that she thinks it is. And then I can actually, if she's practiced enough and kind of going through those worksheets, I can grade it after the fact. She can mark up the sheet and I can come back and grade it after the fact. And there's actually a 2D barcode on there that you scan. It takes you to online to do an online grading. And it, it's really simple. It takes half a minute to grade. And, and then it updates the student profile. So I, I pivoted to this printable offline worksheet because it actually fits very well into classrooms. And that's where I, I've been really wanting to go. Because like I say here, what I'm doing is I'm making it free to teachers. They're able to generate these worksheets um, and send them home. And then parents actually can set up their own free accounts. And from home, they can create new worksheets as well. But if they want access to the dashboards and some more interactive functions to monitor their students' progress, that's where the subscription comes in. Sorry, I should have just held on to the microphone. Um, thank you for explaining that. That really helps me understand more what um, the goal of what you're trying to create here is. I would just suggest maybe putting in a few slides of maybe the worksheet, the dashboard, mm -hmm. because I agree with what Fonzie said. You did a really great job of explaining the problem, but then I feel like you're not explaining enough what solution you've provided, and it's a great solution. So you need mm -hmm. to put in a few more slides to really emphasize the solution that you've made for both parents and teachers. Okay. So I've got a couple of questions about like how you're entering the market. You're asking for some seed funding. It, you, you mentioned a grant with the NSF. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the grant has a matching component, which is, uh, is that true? Yeah, the matching component the and then, yeah. Go yeah, on. the phase one of the grant I've actually applied for in the past. Um, what, I, what I put here, um, this is actually recent and I haven't, um, I haven't submitted that full proposal yet, but I've submitted a full proposal in the past and the feedback that I got was I really needed to not be coming at this cold and actually have a team together. Um, so that's why I'm looking for some seed money before applying for the grant. And then the grant, the, the first phase, um, if I go over here, the first phase isn't matching. That's just $250,000 if I write a good grant that gets accepted. <laughs> the second phase can be up to $1 million, and then it has an additional matching component. If I have investors, they can, they can be matched with additional money up to $750,000. So... Yeah, so uh, on that, um, you know, if you're looking for seed funding, mm -hmm. I mean, going after grants is a fantastic strategy, and I think the NSF is, is great for something like this. Um, how, how do you fit in the marketplace? Like, what other competitors are out there, mm -hmm. and why would it be worth... If you're asking, for example, $250,000 in seed funding, mm -hmm. and you're giving... 10% equity, you know, what is that before they get a return on investment? 2.5 million, mm -hmm. right? So you're, you're expecting that you're going to make, you know, a multi-million dollar company. Yeah. So how does that compete in the marketplace? Yeah. So the, the biggest competitors, <coughs> excuse me, if you look at technology companies, my, my children in school uh, have Lexia. So the school district pays for a Lexia subscription, and my kids are doing Lexia. So that would be like one competitor. ABC Mouse or Starfall or something would be others. Where I see my competitive advantage is that I've found this hack, um, this hybrid intelligence hack, that actually um, is going to just totally disrupt the market. Um, and I truly believe that. I mean, my daughter at age six had read over five million words. Um, my oldest daughter. My, as my kids, <laughs> as we go down the ladder, they, get, they have more and more struggles with learning to read. But, um, but this has really helped them as well. Um, I mean, my son, who I mentioned, would always get those letters out of order. 
he, you know, in the first grade, he read four or five Harry Potter books and finished them in the second grade. So, um, so I, I believe it is revolutionary, and I believe eventually I will be copied. But until we prove how revolutionary it is by taking market share, I don't think anyone's going to copy because, like I said, the experts tend to write it off as unorthodox. A and that's one of the reasons for the National Science Foundation grant is because there is a process, a scientific process that this could go through to prove that efficacy. A and I don't believe it's just going to be marginally uh, more effective. I believe it's going to be revolutionary. We have a question from one of our online folks. They said, how do you account for different learning processes? Um, well, one of the things that I don't really dive into here, but I do believe, um, or I've come to believe, I should say, is when I first came upon this idea, it was from my daughter. Like I mentioned, my oldest daughter learned to read by ear, though we didn't name it that at the time and we didn't have any technological assistance. Um, I thought that was interesting, but I wasn't really um, banking on that being the way my other kids were going to learn how to read, because I believe everybody has different learning styles. Um, when my son was struggling, that's when I started researching dyslexia, and that's also around the time that I started kind of researching, well, this worked for my daughter. I think we can put it into an app. What's the science behind it? Why does it work so well? Why am I floored by how well my daughter read? I mean, I came up with this idea to, to actually take this to a company when my daughter was sitting on my, my lap at age six, maybe age five, and she was reading a mid-grade novel, and I decided to read along with her, and she was turning pages faster than I could keep up. So I'm like, okay, wow, this really, really worked for her. Even if it only helps one in 10 children, I think it's worth trying to put it out there to really help kids. Um, then when I started researching dyslexia, I realized, uh, and more into the brain science of why this was actually working, and I have a really well-developed theory. Um, I realized it's really most, probably gonna be most beneficial to dyslexic students, um, to students that struggle with the mainstream methods of teaching reading. Um, it really helped, like I said, my son, and and my daughter is probably um, the most dyslexic. I actually tried, um, <coughs> when my son was struggling, um, but right before he went into kindergarten, we were, uh, I was recognizing some signs of dyslexia. I signed him up to get tested at the University of Utah. Unfortunately, by the time, eight, six to eight months later, we actually got in and got him evaluated, he was already reading those Harry Potter books. And they said, he's a great reader you might want to look at a gifted program. Um, and and <laughs> so he's never really actually been diagnosed with dyslexia, but I feel like just from my research and observing him, um, to me, dyslexia isn't a diagnosis of struggle. It's a diagnosis of power. It's a, it's a diversity of how the mind is constructed that actually does um, have um, really great advantages. Hey, good job on the presentation. I, I really, I, I think any kind of product that disrupts the education system is really valuable. Um, I'm really curious, have you gone through this method with other people besides your own kids and what feedback have you gotten? Yeah, I have a little bit. Um, I mentioned I put together an alpha product for my son. I had a dozen kids going through that as well. Um, but it, it wasn't super engaging. The parent really had to stay on top of it. So it's that time on screen thing that I said, you know, some other products are really good at. For me, it's not so much the time on screen, it's the effectiveness of the time on the screen. Um, we actually try to limit our kids' time on screen. Um, but the, um, sorry, could you, could you repeat that? <laughs> I lost my train of thought a bit there. I was just wondering if other people, like if you've had friends or oh, family yeah. member, their mm -hmm. kids go through this process to learn. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've had a few close friends who really adopted it. It's kind of hard because one of the reasons I want to make this app is it teaches this practice to parents and children together. Um, 
because it, it really is a practice. It's not a one and done lesson. It's not, you know, a series of lessons. I've had several good family friends who have read my book, Sarah and the Puka. They have implemented the practice with their children. And like I said, it's not just one lesson. It's a really simple practice, but it's a practice. It has to be repeated over time. And those who have done it, um, I have some testimonials. They said it's just amazing. This is just quick feedback um, on the presentation because just just from uh, some comments of other people, a thought that I had is, um, you know, the the name of it is Sarah.ai. Um, you know, you could, I, if it were me presenting, I would almost take this character of, of Sarah and create a story of here's Sarah, here's the problems that she's having reading, mm -hmm. here's this this new revolutionary tool that now Sarah has kind of yeah. create a story with the problem and everything as yeah. opposed to the numbers, the stats, and the mm -hmm. slides. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I actually have a story. <laughs> it's about a 45-minute <laughs> audio book. But I get what you're saying, yeah, and I think that's good feedback. Thank you. I have two questions for you. One is, what have you seen has been a, a challenge to to get yourself out there? You know, what's, the been, what's been the, your biggest stumbling block? Um, my biggest stumbling block has been um, having those credentials to be taken seriously and building a team, getting people who, who have the experience needed to, to really gain a passion for this, um, like I have. And granted, I've been developing this passion for five years, so it's kind of hard to match my passion for it. But um, th that credential part, I was actually a college dropout when I came up with this idea. And I had 10 years of industry experience um, in project management for factory automation, physical automation, not software automation so much. But, um, but uh, that's, one of the, uh, that's the primary reason I went back to school. Like I said, I, I graduated with a bachelor's last year. I'm in an executive MBA program right now. And uh, those credentials, I think, are really going to help. And my next hurdle is just building a team, uh, whether that's hiring a team with some seed money or, or trying to find a founder who, who really has as much passion for this as I do. And I'd like to offer some feedback, if, if I may. Um, have you ever thought about, you know, going to some type of primary school and giving them the, your product, you know, 100% mm -hmm. free of charge just because uh, as a test group, you know what I mean? Yeah. As a testimony group, ha have you done something similar to that? So that's actually one of the, the, the last pitch that I wrote to the National Science Foundation. It was basically exactly that, just a, um, either an in-class or an after-school program to help uh, kids learn to read. Um, and um, I haven't done that formally yet, um, but I d um, all three of my kids have had the same first grade teacher, and I've talked to her a lot about the product um, that I'm working on. And so my worksheets aren't quite ready for prime time yet. Like I said, I'm still finalizing that dashboard. I have pretty much everything else done. But that dashboard is really where the teachers start to see that value and can start to really use it. And, and uh, related to that, I mentioned this is my third time presenting at USET, uh, Utah Coalition of Educational Technology. And um, last time I presented, um, I, the the room was packed. There were uh, an additional 60 people on the wait list. Um, all the teachers uh, there were really interested in what I was working on. But uh, again, at the time, I didn't really have a product ready for classrooms, which now I feel like I, I'm there. Well, thank you, Ross. This is incredible. Um, I personally love what you, you're doing and what you're, you're heading towards. I think it's an, an incredible endeavor. Um, one that's going to, I think, revolutionize, um, you know, reading and such. Um, and we just have one last question for you, and, and that is, uh, what can the One Million Cup community do for you? I just really appreciate the feedback and the chance to practice. Um, I, I actually pitched five years ago, I think. Um, I've come a long way since then. At the time, I was looking for a co-founder or some money to, to build that team that I mentioned because I didn't have the skills to develop myself. But over the last five years, I've developed those skills. I'm going to bootstrap this startup if I need to. 
and, and make it happen. So I'm really passionate about that. Everything, all my websites I've done so far and the, the app I'm working on right now, um, I've all coded myself. And uh, I, I'm just really looking for someone else who can catch the vision, whatever skills or, or resources they have. Awesome. Well, let's give it up for Russ. Thank you.